Good morning, you're watching Doordarshan News and this is the news for Hearing Impaired. I am Nancy Kohli and with me is Sonu Pandey. Let's begin with the headlines. Home Ministry's guidelines for lockdown 2.0 to allow the select activities to resume after assessment on the 20th. Health, agriculture, industrial units in rural areas and select utility services in the self-employed sectors may be allowed. Mass activities to remain prohibited, face marks mandatory outside homes, spitting made a punishable offence. The centre also issues directives to states and the union territories to tackle COVID-19, seek strict implementation of all the steps related to the lockdown 2.0 guidelines. The failure will mean no relaxation in the restrictions from the 20th of April. The Health Ministry says no community transmission of COVID-19 in the country so far. 170 hotspots and 207 non-spot districts identified. Door-to-door -door survey to be done in the hotspot areas. The number of active COVID-19 cases in the country now reaches 10,197 with 392 fatalities. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan holds a high-level video conference meeting with the WHO officials. The minister says that India has the lowest number of infected cases per million people in the world. The World Health Organization's polio surveillance team and other field staff join COVID-19 fight in India. The External Affairs Ministry condemns the USCIRF spreading misguided reports on COVID-19 protocols followed in India, says the Commission must stop adding religious colour to the national fight against the virus. No religion-based segregation in the Gujarat hospitals. The World Health Organization says it regrets U.S. President's decision to stop the contribution even as Donald Trump accuses the organization of a tragic and horrible mistake in the early guidance. The global cases of COVID-19 crossed the 2 million mark. The deaths toll over 1,34,000. And the Indian Med Department predicts a normal monsoon this year. The June to September rainfall expected to be 100% of its long period average. That could prove to be a boon for India's farmers and the economy. Our top story, as Prime Minister Modi had announced during his lockdown extension address to the nation on Tuesday, the Home Ministry came out with a revised set of guidelines the next day of which activities in which sectors will be permitted from the 20th of April if the lockdown is followed strictly. And that gu guidelines in fact uh, mentions about uh, the hospitals, nursing homes, clinics, telemedicine facilities, also dispensaries, chemists, pharmacies and all medicine shops including the Jan Oshadi Kendras and the medical equipment shops. In fact, uh, also talking about the medical laboratories and collection centers as well and pharmaceutical and medical research laboratories, institutions carrying out the COVID-19 related research also mentioned in that guideline. And the farming operations uh, by farmers and the farm workers in the field uh, has also been in fact spoken about in that guideline and agencies procuring agriculture products including the MSP operations. The APMC operated Mondays or as notified by the state or the union territories governments. And direct marketing operations by state and the union territories or by industry directly from the farmers and the FPO's cooperatives as well. The decentralized marketing and procurement at village level to also be promoted. The shops of the agricultural machinery, spare parts and repairs as well has also been mentioned in that lockdown. And in the transport sector, all the goods uh, traffic has been allowed. Uh, the transportation of goods by rail and parcel trains and the airports and related uh, facilities for cargo, movement, relief and evacuation. 
and also in fact mentioning about seaports and inland container depots for cargo transport including authorized custom clearing and forwarding agents land ports for cross land border transportation of essential goods also the shops for truck repairs and dhabas on the highways the movement of staff and contractual labor for permitted transport operations with passes from the local authorities and functional from 20th april in the private sector well that includes the print and electronic media including the broadcast dth and cable services also it and it enabled services with up to 50% strength data and call centers for government activities only that comes in the private sector also the government approved common service centers at the gram panchayat level the e-commerce companies and vehicles used by e-commerce operators with necessary permissions as well and that also includes the courier services in fact also services provided by the self-employed persons like electrician it repairs plumbers motor mechanics and carpenters and enforceable national directives will that include the wearing of face cover is compulsory in all the public and workplaces social distancing is to be ensured by in charge of all the public and workplaces and even in transport there is going to be no gathering of five or more persons allowed anywhere the district magistrate to regulate gatherings like marriages and funerals as well and spitting in the public is punishable with a fine there's also the strict ban that continues on the sale of liquor gutka and tobacco and the center has also issued guidelines to states on the lockdown which is to be strictly followed The center has asked the state to ensure strict implementation of the revised guidelines related to lockdown and the relaxation from the 20th April is to be withdrawn only uh, in fact if there's a failure that will be seen anywhere. And let's now in fact also tell you about the big takeaways from the health ministry's briefing uh, and that briefing uh, spoke about the 170 hotspot districts that have been identified. and these districts are the hot spots where the number of infected patients is doubling in four or less days also 207 districts have been identified as the non hot spots and these districts are not the hot spots where the infection rate here is expected to be less in these districts and also door to door survey is uh, being conducted in the covid-19 active areas and patients with cough fever and respiratory problems are uh, being tracked the officials are also ensuring that these patients are not suffering from corona virus and efforts uh, in the non spot uh, 207 districts that is uh, is to see that they do not slip into the hot spot districts and the low risk areas to also have cluster containment strategy no community transmission though has been reported as yet In fact also the recovery of patients from covid-19 cases has gone up. The rate of uh, recovered patients now stands at 11.4%. The cabinet secretary also remember held a meeting with the officials of the state government and districts through video conferencing. And talking of the all India figures uh, the total number of positive cases stands at 11933 out of these 10197 cases are active 1343 have uh, been cured or discharged and there have been 392 fatalities so far Union Health Minister Dr Harshwardhan held a high level meeting with the World Health Organization officials through video conferencing on the measures to uh, fight the COVID-19 infection Later the minister also held a press conference and said the situation in the country is under control and India is in a better position than the rest of the world. Our incidence is per million the lowest in the whole world. It ranges between 4 to 8 at different times it has ranged like that. Although for many of these countries it is in 2000s, 2000, 3000, 1000 
like that right now we are quite well placed in the sense that we know our enemy we also know where our enemy is and the talk about these hot spots is i think i must congratulate our surveillance people our idsp people our who people all those who are involved in this and particularly all our state governments that we have been able to pinpoint where the virus is right now the union finance minister nirmala sitharaman participated in the virtual session of the second g20 finance ministers and the central bank governors meeting under the saudi arabian presidency on wednesday to discuss the global economic outlook amid evolving covid-19 pandemic crisis India has disbursed financial assistance amounting to 3.9 billion dollars to more than 320 million people. Policy measures undertaken by the government of India, the Reserve Bank of India and other regulators have helped defreeze the market and catalyze the credit flows. Also the G20 preparing a an action plan to safeguard people's jobs and incomes restoring confidence preserving financial stability also reviving growth providing help to countries needing assistance coordinating on the public health and financial measures and minimizing disruption to the global supply chain and also in fact efforts on for the global community hopes being expressed to overcome this crisis soon and uh, the minister also said that the lessons learned will enable us to develop prudent policy measures to combat any such crisis in the future the finance officials from the group of 20 major economies agreed to suspend the debt service payments for the world's poorest countries through the end of the year a move quickly matched by a group of hundreds of private creditors the decision was taken at a virtual conference the actions to freeze both principal payments uh, repayments and interest payments will free up uh, to more than 20 billion us dollars for the countries to spend on improving their health systems and fighting the coronavirus pandemic The World Bank uh, Group President uh, David Malpass and the IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva have welcomed the decision of the G20 group of leading economies to suspend the repayment of the official bilateral credit of the poor countries. In a joint statement they said that this is a powerful fast acting initiative that will do much to safeguard the lives and the livelihoods of millions of the most vulnerable people. They further added that the World Bank Group and the IMF will move quickly to respond to the G20's request to support this action by working closely with these countries in ways that make the best use of this vital lifeline. In response to the media query on a tweet on Wednesday by the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom on India, The official spokesperson Anurag Shrivastava said that the commission must stop adding religious color to India's national goal of fighting the coronavirus pandemic. He further dismissed the commission's claim that COVID-19 patients in Ahmedabad hospital segregated based on religious identity. He also ensured that there is no segregation of COVID-19 patients at the civil hospital in Ahmedabad on religious lines. He's also accused the commission spreading misguided reports on professional medical protocols followed to deal with COVID-19 in India. The World Health Organization chief has said that he regretted US President Donald Trump's decision to pull funding for the agency and called for the world unity to fight the coronavirus pandemic. Addressing a news conference the WHO chief said that the World Health Organization is reviewing the impact on its work of any withdrawal of the US funding and would work with the partners to fill any gaps to ensure its work continues uninterrupted. The American Medical Association called on the US President Donald Trump to reconsider his decision to temporarily halt funding to the World Health Organization. over its handling of the coronavirus pandemic Trump said that the WHO had failed in its basic duty and it must be held accountable 
He said it promoted China's disinformation about the virus that likely led to a wider outbreak. In a statement, Dr. Patrice Harris called it a dangerous step in the wrong direction that will not make defeating COVID-19 easier and urged Donald Trump to reconsider. U.S. President Donald Trump will make an announcement on the guidelines for reopening parts of the country amid the coronavirus pandemic. In a White House uh, briefing on Wednesday, Trump said that the data suggests the U.S. has passed its peak of new cases and such encouraging developments allow for finalizing guidelines for states on reopening. He further said that more than 20 states were in extremely good shape and some could reopen even before the end of April when the current federal social distancing guidelines are set to expire. Now, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has announced an additional 150 million U.S. dollars to the global fight against COVID-19, bringing its total funding to more than 250 million U.S. dollars. The fund will help uh, speed up the development of the treatment, vaccines and the public health measures to tackle the COVID-19 outbreak. The Gates Foundation is the second largest donor to the World Health Organization behind the U.S. Reacting to Trump's decision of uh, defunding the World Health Organization, Melinda Gates said it makes absolutely no sense during a pandemic. In the largest single-day increase, Bangladesh has reported 219 fresh cases of coronavirus and four more deaths, including a physician, in 24 hours since Tuesday afternoon. Now, with this, the total number of deaths due to COVID-19 in Bangladesh has gone up to 50 and infected cases to 1,231. Announcing this on Wednesday in Dhaka, the health minister said that 49 people have recovered so far. He said that most of the new cases were reported from Dhaka and Ryan Ganj. Ghazipur, Karnia Ganj and Maiman Singh have also reported a sharp increase in the corona patients. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina mourned the demise of the physician uh, and declared that the government will take care of the entire family of Dr. Moinuddin. In Sri Lanka, two new COVID-19 cases were detected. The number of active cases uh, there in the country stands at 165 as 63 people have recovered. Seven fatalities have also been reported from Sri Lanka. Earlier, 15 people had tested positive, including eight in Jaffna, which was the second highest rise in a single day. The whole of Sri Lanka is under curfew and the country's biggest festival of New Year is being celebrated indoors. The Sri Lankan president, Gotabaya Rajapaksha, has instructed the officials to make necessary recommendations required to maintain normal activities in the industrial, agricultural and business sectors. Meanwhile, the director general of the health services uh, said that the patients who tested positive during the past few days appear to have a low viral load in them. He said the spread of COVID-19 in the community is also at a minimum level as of now. The Maldivian uh, president, Ibrahim Mohamed Soli, has made an emotional appeal for people to stay indoors following confirmation of the first COVID-19 case in Mali. In an address, President Soli urged the public to treat each other with care and remain patient and assist each other according to the letter and spirit of Islamic teachings. His appeal followed a person with no travel history testing positive in congested Mali. The health authorities immediately announced a 24-hour lockdown in the capital, which may be extended. The Maldivian president emphasized that work is underway to determine the source of the infection. He said 11 samples of direct contacts are being tested currently and contact tracing is underway in Kashidu Island, where a direct contact of the patient had recently traveled. Earlier, the 20 cases that tested positive in the island nation were either among foreign tourists or people who had travelled abroad. Germany plans uh, will let smaller shops uh, reopen next week after a week-long uh, coronavirus shutdown and to restart uh, opening schools from the 3rd of May. 
but Europe's biggest economy is keeping strict social distancing rules in place for now. After the much-anticipated talks with Germany's 16 state governors, Chancellor Angela Merkel set out a plan for the first steps for a cautious restart of public life following neighboring Austria and Denmark and other countries launching a slow loosening of restrictions. The new infections in Germany have slowed in recent weeks, but Merkel cautioned that the country has achieved only a fragile intermediate success so far and does not have much room for maneuver. Around 700 sailors assigned to the French aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle's naval group tested positive for COVID-19. France's Ministry for the Armed Forces said that 1,767 mariners, nearly all from the aircraft carrier itself, had uh, tested uh, and results showed at least 668 to be infected with COVID-19. The carrier, which had uh, most recently been taking part in exercises with the northern European navies in the Baltic Sea, arrived home two weeks earlier than expected after about 40 crew members showed signs of COVID-19. The unwell crew members had been placed under strict medical observation on board the nuclear-powered carrier and a team equipped to carry out the first test airlifted to the vessel. The crew from the aircraft carrier has been put in con confinement while the pilots of the carrier's warplanes and helicopters were also in quarantine. The Navy chief has meanwhile ordered an investigation. And Rio de Janeiro's Christ the Redeemer, one of the most famous landmarks around the world, was lit up in green on Wednesday to honor the military personnel on the front lines in the fight against COVID-19. The soldiers were gathered at the base of Christ for the ceremony, paying tribute to the armed forces all over the world 